will talk about JIT compiler of Ruby 2.6. First, I'm uh, named Kokubin and from uh, ARM, uh, which is, uh, I'm a grad. Uh, my company was previously Treasure Data, which is acquired by ARM this year. So I'm now from ARM. And uh, I'm a Ruby committer for maintaining uh, EOB, template engine at first, and then now I'm maintaining the, mainly maintaining JIT compiler now. So you may not know JIT compiler, but I, uh, last year I experimented a, a optimization idea called JIT compiler last year um, in April. And then in, uh, immediately after the Ruby 2.5 release in last Christmas, um, I prepared a, a pull request to merge a JIT compiler overnight and just uh, merged in the early this year. So, and this was good for having a much longer time for improving the JIT compiler for Ruby 2.6. And I've developed that for about 10 months after March. And then I, I'm, number, I'm currently a number two committer of the Ruby 2.6. I've been working a lot for JIT compiler. Then I got a Ruby Prize 2018 this year. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So th this trade talk is all about the Ruby 2.6. In the Ruby 2.6.0 previous release notes, uh, it has a JIT section. So what's JIT? Do you know that? If you know that, raise your hands. Okay, <laughs> you know a lot about JIT compiler. So it's an uh, abbreviation of just in time and plus compiler, but that's not explained so much. So let me explain the history of Ruby implementation. So historically, Ruby 1.8 was parsing the Ruby core to a tree called abstract syntax tree, like uh, plus for left hand uh, A local variable and B in the right hand and traverse the tree each time. So it's slow if the tree becomes a lot complicated or longer or de uh, higher. But after that, um, Koichi introduced the Ruby virtual machine. It compares the tree to a sequential instructions and this, uh, it's faster than traversing a tree and so it's a little faster, uh, no, no, so much faster. So it's a current implementation of the Ruby 2.5. After that, so I did this. Um, in 2.6, uh, it's compared to native code. Uh, it is specific to the uh, machine which is running the Ruby app interpreter. So it's less uh, complicated. Uh, no, 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 no. It's less calculation. Um, so if we use this uh, uh, virtual machine, uh, it needs to uh, interpret the uh, get local instruction and do a lot of things to get a local variable A. But in this time, um, native code, it just uh, rows the uh, first argument, uh, uh, argument of the method to uh, register, and then fetches the second argument to register, and then plus uh, just run the uh, add instruction. So it's a lot of faster than uh, dispatching the plus instruction. So this is a JIT compiler. But how can we use it? So it's that optimization is still experimental, so it's not uh, in enabled by default. You need to pass a dash dash JIT option to enable JIT compiler. Or if you are not using the Ruby command, if like Rails a command, um, you need to pass an environment variable has, that has a dash dash JIT. So let's use that. So then we benchmark that. Um, there's a, a benchmark uh, called uh, optcout for aiming to uh, achieve the Ruby three by three, which is uh, aiming to achieve the three times faster Ruby three than uh, Ruby 2.0. And um, basically this uh, is a NES a Famicom emulator that achieves the uh, 20 frame per second by uh, the Ruby 2.0, and it becomes the 60 frame per second that's good in the, uh, hopefully in Ruby three. In my machine, um, it's a 
my machine is a little strong, so it's not uh, changes APS by second, but by default, but uh, uh, it becomes uh, already 2.5 times faster in JIT compiler. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and it's even faster than the previous uh, 2.5, um, 1.8 times faster. So um, the three bro uh, black bar graphs are this, just uh, this year, and left uh, six bars are six years. So this year, we had a, a lot of progress for uh, Ruby interpreters' performance. So we already achieved three, <laughs> Ruby three times 2.5, <laughs> only remaining 0.5. But, but how about other benchmarks? It's just a Famicom, and I guess nobody is running the Famicom in the production. <laughs> yeah. So I got the bug report, MG throws down res application, <laughs> and uh, uh, Sidekick is thrown down by enabling JIT compiler. <laughs> so <laughs> what's happening there? So JIT makes things slower, or so today's topic is all about the JIT compiler's performance characteristics. So there's a lot of trade-offs, and you may want to care about that for 2.6, it's, since it's just your experimental. In the future, I want, to, you, I want you not to care about that, but uh, for now, uh, we, may, we need to care about that since it's uh, still experimental. So the first topic is about um, when does Ruby become slow in JIT compiler, like Rails or uh, Sidekick, like that? Um, yeah, the first thing is that when there are many JIT methods, uh, it becomes slow. So um, previous, uh, previous uh, Sam's report was compiling the uh, 10,000 methods in Rails because uh, Rails has a lot of uh, methods. And uh, it's the number of uh, maximum uh, compiled methods is just uh, 1,000 by default. And I think it's even uh, too, I, uh, so at first I thought it's too small for Rails or you no know, serious applications, but uh, it, turns out, it turned out to be too bigger for computers. So why? why? <laughs> so the, the, this, this is because the JIT compiler by C compiler and dynamic loading of the current implementation. So currently, um, so this JIT implementation is called MJIT, which is invented by other person, another person, but I uh, maintaining that. But uh, this, that invokes our uh, so. In pri uh, after Ruby 2.6, uh, when dash dash JIT is parsed, uh, M, uh, our native thread called MJIT worker is uh, spawned in addition to the Ruby main thread that doesn't hold a GVL, so run, that can run parallelly, and that uh, spawns a GCC process under the Ruby process. So after uh, Ruby 2.6 and you pass JIT option, you see uh, Ruby and trees uh, GCC or CC1 on some <laughs> strange, dangerous compiler processes, under <laughs> shared processes. But yeah, it's uh, intentional, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's running such, uh, in such kind of uh, architecture. And it uses the uh, compiled binary. In, compiled binary is placed in the disk, and uh, Ruby interpreter rolls the dynamically rolls the uh, object file to the memory by dynamic routing uh, a function called dir open. And it has some limitations. So I'll explain the limitation of the dir open. So by using such dynamic routing feature, uh, native function is uh, load like this. So this is uh, like uh, two megabytes. It's a, a little bigger for com computers. And uh, so in the middle, it has a very large unused space. And uh, if the three methods are loaded, um, heap structure is like this. So when there are multiple uh, methods, uh, we need to seek very large unused space to load multiple methods. So it takes time. So if we compile the 10,000 methods rough to this, uh, 10,000 10, methods uh, multiplies two megabytes, very big. So <laughs> um, it doesn't consume memory because it's unused space, but uh, it needs to uh, seek the very large distance. 
So it's slow. The second one is about uh, when there are still methods to be jitted, it becomes slow. So it's strange. The first one was um, when there are many jitted methods, it's slow. And also, there are still methods to be jitted, it's slow. So <laughs> when it can it be fast? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very difficult problem. So there's a, a lot of trade-offs. And uh, we, so we, I solved this problem in Ruby 2.6.0 Preview 3 a little. Um, so I introduced a technique called JIT compaction. I just named that, but it's not a very normal name. And JIT compaction does, uh, it's, uh, it's performed only when it reaches the uh, max cache. It's, it's a number of methods, limit of number met, uh, jitted method, and it reaches the 1,000 method. Um, it co invokes the JIT compaction. When it's invoked, uh, this kind of uh, loaded memories are compacted to this one, only one, two megabytes. So um, the, it doesn't have a, a large distance, so it improves the memory load overhead. But still, there's a, a new space, and so it's not uh, ideal, but it's much better than uh, just writing the multiple pages. So I, I'm solving this uh, issue a little, but it's not so completely solved. So if we wrote uh, 10,000 methods, uh, it's still slow. Then Another problem is uh, CPU memory resources. So if we run a C compiler, of course it uses the uh, CPU resource and uh, CPU calculation and uh, memory. So if your com computer does not have a lot of uh, spare resources, uh, it uh, pressures the Ruby's resources and Ruby becomes, can, could be slow. So if your comp computer is not so s strong, uh, like my benchmark computer, um, it can be slower than my computer. Also, um, when uh, GCC or uh, computer compi other C compilers are running, we lock the, uh, really lock, lock, sometimes lock on GC or rate PID since there's a, uh, that there could be a rest condition by, so when JIT is running, if GC at, uh, is running at the same time, it causes segmentation fault. So we uh, sometimes lock the uh, Ruby's main thread on uh, GC invocation or rate PID because uh, Wait PID waits for uh, process that is invoked by Ruby, Ruby script, but also there's a process uh, GCC created by Ruby process. So to identify uh, which is created by Ruby script or MG worker, uh, we are tracking the PIDs of the child processes. So yeah, it also has a rock. So um, when the there's a method to be jitted. Uh, it has a rocks and uh, memory uh, uh, pressure uh, issue by the JIT compaction, since it's not uh, compacted, uh, compacted yet. So the, the last one is uh, when trace point is enabled. Do you know, do, have you ever heard about trace point? Oh, I think, yeah, yeah. So I think you may not know this. So um, trace point is a dynamic instrumentation feature. Uh, so it is used uh, by bug or, uh, yeah, by bug uses uh, uh, dynamic instrumentation to debug a step, uh, step by step uh, debugging. And also uh, web console gem uses the bind ex gem that enables trace point by default and also coverage. Uh, so if you, if you cover, uh, measure coverage of the test test, you may uh, be already enabling the trace point. So by, um, so there are for development and testing. So currently JIT is uh, designed for production. And also last year, uh, Koichi uh, introduced uh, uh, optimization that is available only when the trace point is disabled, even while he uh, implemented the trace point. So <laughs> he, he believes the, uh, Trace point is not used even while he implemented that. But anyway, uh, currently, uh, trace point uh, is not supported for now. So if that uh, trace point is enabled, JIT is also disabled for now. But in the future, it will be supported. So in summary, there are three uh, situations that may uh, make uh, Ruby throw. And in OptiCarrot, uh, 
it's a short benchmark. It's not, uh, just run within uh, only one minute or so. So uh, it's not, it doesn't trigger JIT compaction because uh, it doesn't reach the 1,000 methods. So it, uh, pres it's pressured by uh, there's three methods to be JITed. But uh, in Wales benchmark by Sam, um, he uh, compiled uh, 10,000 methods. So <laughs> there's a lot of pressures for that. So that, that's, this is a matrix, but uh, Opticart could uh, up, uh, achieve the very good result because uh, this downside is uh, overcome by the benefit of the uh, JIT compiler. So let's talk about the benefit. So when it's made, uh, what is made faster by JIT? So all, almost all methods are got fast by JIT compiler. <laughs> so this is a silver bird part of JIT. But, <laughs> yeah, because this is because, um, so when Ruby uh, virtual machine is running, uh, computer uh, has a registers and instruction pointers that uh, calculates uh, for the Ruby interpreter and virtual machine itself. And Ruby virtual machine has a stack pointer and a program counter. You may, you don't need to remember that, but that's just, just uh, pointers. And just pointers are calculated to uh, uh, calculate the get local instruction and uh, send instructions like that. And uh, get, ro and get local is executed. A, uh, a local variable is pushed to stack and stack pointer is moved. So these two pointers are moved by the virtual machine. But when we move to JIT compiler, uh, we don't need to use stack, uh, stack pointer and program counter. So stack pointer and program counter is uh, pointers and so we need to uh, con uh, control memories and so there's a memory pressure. So we can eliminate the pressure by using the JIT compiler and JIT compiler just uh, moves the native instruction pointer and the registers. Then the second one uh, is uh, basic operators on core classes. So there, is a, there are some methods that is specially uh, optimized by a virtual machine. So things like uh, plus, minus, uh, multiply, division, and uh, uh, less than, less than, and, and equal, equal for things like that. So such kind of basic operators are optimized by virtual machine, and uh, by it's, it's since it's optimized, uh, JIT can easily optimize that by uh, using the method inlining. So actually, virtual machine can't inline the method for now, but uh, JIT can easily do that if it's optimized. So when by inlining the put object one and put object two, uh, JIT compiler can a JIT compiler or C compiler can uh, calculate the uh, result of the one plus two because the, these bars are inline in these three methods. So it just returns a three. It, it doesn't have a odd instruction. So C compiler can inline such kind of uh, inline instructions, which is uh, optimized by virtual machine. So these are, uh, if uh, Ruby, your Ruby pro application are using this kind of methods, it, it's likely to be fast. And also, the third one is a uh, covering Ruby method. Ruby method means a uh, method written in Ruby. So, I talk, I read, talk a little bit about the method dispatch of Ruby virtual machine. And uh, if there's a script like this, foo.bar, but uh, when prior to reaching this line, we don't know what the class of the foo and what method implementation of the bar. So at first, we need to search method from the receiver, getting the receiver class and uh, traversing the class hierarchy and get the method definition from the tree. And after that, we got the, the method was, uh, we found, uh, the, we found that's a foo bar method. And which is written in Ruby, and so we switched the uh, implementation uh, virtual machine to call uh, uh, virtual machine again because a Ruby method is uh, evaluated by the virtual machine. So there's uh, some th switches, and uh, especially method search is slow because it's so complicated and dynamic because Ruby is dynamic. And but uh, for that, virtual machine already has a cache for that inline cache. So for each line, it has an inline cache, and uh, if it has a cache, so 
when the line is second evaluated the second time, uh, it verifies the cache, and if, and if it is redefined, it searches the method again. But if uh, it's not uh, redefined again, uh, redefined, uh, it just uses a cache value and uh, invokes a Ruby method. And for JIT compiler, we just uh, we would be able to generate a code that knows the foo bar is a Ruby method, and that's a foo bar. So <laughs> it eliminates the many branches, like uh, switch to the typos method and uh, other things inside the verify cache and uh, between the verify cache and method entry. So it reduces the br uh, branches, and so it doesn't rely on doesn't need to rely on branch prediction, or it does reduces the memory access for reading the method entry because. Uh, as we know, that's a foo sharp bar method entry. Uh, we can inline the pointer or address to the method entry in the generated code. So it's faster. Also, same, similar things can be applied to instance variable. So the last thing is instance, this one. And uh, so for instance variable, when there's a code at foo, uh, we don't know where which address has the Variable for, vario for the at foo. And we need to search the address and the index of the uh, heap. So this function has uh, many branches and complicated. And uh, it's slow, but uh, after we find the index, we can see the instance variable. But if it, uh, sec in second time, we have an uh, inline cache, and it ha if it has cache and it uh, may, uh, judges it's a diff same class or not. And if it's the same class, uh, it just uses the uh, index two again, and uh, it looks up the instance variable. But this, in this case, uh, if it's JIT compiled, uh, we can know, we already know the index is two because we execute the JIT compiler just in time. So we know that's two, and it's inline, and so we don't need to read inline cache, and so rest memory access. And also, searching index has a lot of branches, and so C compiler is uh, confused by a lot of branches, which is the main path, and by reducing such uh, complicated paths, uh, the code is very much faster. So in summary, um, there's a, there are four types of situations that can be faster, and uh, Opscout is a strange program which is very instance variable specific. So <laughs> Opscout accesses uh, instance variable a lot of times, and uh, so Opscout has a very hot method called render pixel, and it reads a lot of uh, instance variables. And it's, it, the performance of Opticart is very rise on the performance of the instance variable. So the Ruby 3 times 2.5 is achieved by instance variable access optimization. Yeah. And so for, for Rails, I don't know how often it could be used uh, instance variable compared to Opticart, but other optimization can be uh, still used for uh, Rails. But I guess uh, basic operators on quarkuses are not so of used often on Rails because uh, hash is quarkuses, but uh, hash with indifferent access is not quarkuses, of course. So if the, it's wrapped or and also string has uh, uh, active support safe buffer and things like that. And so there's, if there's, we are using a wrapper for it or using uh, alias like blank, so. Ruby virtual machine is tracking the redefinition of the empty, a uh, method named empty, but we are not uh, tracking the method called blank. So when we call blank, we, even while it's alias to blank, uh, a empty, it doesn't become fast. So Rails has some uh, blockers for optimization, and so it could not defeat the 10,000 methods. So I want to improve that. Um, so I want to talk about the future of Ruby. <laughs> so we will Ruby 2.6 be fast only on the Famicom. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> so future idea is that, um, so this Opticart benchmark is not using any, creating any object, so it doesn't uh, test uh, uh, memory allocation performance. 
So for optimizing the object creation, we can use a, a technique called escape analysis, which is just uh, judges uh, this object is not uh, used by other methods or outside this method. So if it's not used outside this method, we can allocate the memory to just uh, this frame. And when if it's, uh, the object is allocated to the stack uh, a frame, uh, we can allocate the memory by increasing just a stack pointer to uh, increment and uh, release the memory by uh, de uh, decrementing the stack pointer. So it's faster than calling malloc or free, and so it could be fast. But um, uh, this year, Koichi introduced an uh, uh, optimization called transient heap, which is for short lived objects, but it didn't have a lot of impact for various applications, so this may not have impact either. So, this is hard. <laughs> but, but still, there are, I, I believe there are still rooms for improvements even in Ruby 2.6. So I think we can change the heuristics to trigger or compact JIT, because um, so if there are, uh, so we, on Rails application, uh, we could JIT compile the method that is never used on uh, production or just used for in initialization. So it just pressures the memory, and uh, if we change the heuristics or logic or strategy to uh, uh, close or release the jitted method, which is uh, decided to be never used, um, we can uh, change the strategy to improve the uh, JIT compiled performance. And also, there is a uh, optimization in G GCC called uh, profile guided optimization. Uh, by passing the option profile generate to GCC, we can generate a binary to profile a, a binary. And once we run the binary, and we can, uh, so the profile binary generates a profile result, and if we pass the profile result to the GCC, uh, GCC can generate a better a binary, uh, which is like, um, so if there's, there's a method, a function which is not used so often, uh, we can move the memory to not so used area and it can be fast because uh, a very important uh, code that can be, uh, be in the similar place and uh, memory pressure is reduced. So it's good for branch prediction as well and uh, also uh, I already uh, implemented the uh, Ex uh, experimented uh, method inlining. So by using the method inlining, uh, 10,000 methods can be just uh, some methods if the passes are not so many. So we can uh, improve the memory pressure by using the method. We could be uh, able to, uh, we may be able to improve the memory pressure by uh, method inlining. And this is already, I have, I have patch for this, and so this is possible in Ruby 2.6. And previously of Ruby 2.6 is already reduced, but uh, my, uh, the Ruby 2.6 release manager is my colleague, and so I asked, um, until when I can in introduce a big change for 2.6? And they, uh, she said, uh, 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 November is fine, so <laughs> we can, uh, we'll be, yeah, we'll reduce RC1 in the beginning of the December, so until that, we could be able to do that. <laughs> so prior to December, we want to uh, experiment then and improve that. So to improve that, uh, we need benchmarks. So I, I, this, uh, last week I tweeted this, uh, I want Ruby benchmark, which is made slower by passing JIT option. And I got many <laughs> tweets. <laughs> Thank you, but I'm a little sorry about that. But it's not so bad because it's not, uh, Ruby 2.6 is not released yet. We have uh, one month or two months to improve that. So it's very welcome at this moment, at this moment. Not, not, don't do this after Ruby 2.6 release. <laughs> And if you are considering the bench, uh, creating a benchmark for Ruby 3 by 3, I recommend uh, Benchmark Driver Gem, which is created by me, by uh, <laughs> Ruby Grant Project. <laughs> so this is located in the uh, Benchmark Driver slash Benchmark Driver. And uh, this is uh, very, probably you can't read this, but this is an example for sending a pull request to Raven Ruby Gem. Uh, this is a, uh, 
So this is similar to, uh, this output is similar to benchmark IPS. Benchmark driver can configure the, uh, uh, has a lot of plugins to configure the how to measure and also uh, how to output. So this output is by default uh, like a benchmark IPS. And also the characteristics of the benchmark driver is that a benchmark driver can compare the multiple implementation of rubies. So this is comparing Maybe you can't read this, but uh, this is comparing the Ruby 2.6 versus 2.6 plus JIT versus JRuby and JRuby plus Invoke Dynamic. So this can, kind of thing can be done by benchmark driver, but the, of course it's not so easy in the benchmark IPS or other popular benchmark uh, existing benchmark libraries. So I'd recommend uh, using benchmark driver. Also. Uh, if, you, if you use a benchmark driver, uh, Ruby bench, uh, most of the benchmarks in RubyBench is already using the benchmark driver. And uh, since it's pluggable, uh, output plugging for RubyBench is already there. So if you write the a benchmark in benchmark driver, uh, this, you, the, your benchmark can be easily added to this RubyBench. And also, um, I have a lot of benchmark, continuous benchmarks. That this uh, monitor is, uh, uh, each commit, um, this, uh, so there is a lot of, maybe you can read this at all, but that, that's uh, many <laughs> time methods. So time class has a lot of methods and many methods are monitored, performance of many methods are monitored. And uh, this year I experienced the performance uh, regression by moving to Docker because uh, it calls a system call that reads the etc. local time. And I reported that to my colleague, and uh, my colleague optimized uh, or time zone related things in time. So it becomes faster and it's monitored. And once we hit some regression, we can uh, find that in by this. And also, of course, this is uh, used by, uh, achieved by benchmark driver. And so you can add some monitoring by using benchmark driver easily. So, we still have eight minutes, but this is conclusion. Uh, Ruby uh, 2.6 uh, Preview 3 is still early days, sorry, experimental. But uh, there's uh, one option if we couldn't uh, improve the uh, uh, Ruby 2.6, uh, we can use the uh, JIT Maxcast smaller compared to 10,000 methods to reduce the memory pressure or uh, early JIT compaction. And also, we still have time to improve Ruby 2.6. So benchmarks are welcome. Thank you. <laughs> question? Yeah, that was, uh, uh, so the question was, the, is this kind of <laughs> example are real assembly instruction, and this is uh, some mm, sued by, but it's a uh, assembly instruction. Yeah, correct. So that's uh, that's uh, achieved by using a C compiler for specific architecture, and that's uh, assembles for specific architecture. And the uh, input is a C compiler. I see, no, 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 C source. So. I'm doing just generating C code, and C compiler uh, abstracts away the architectures. The question was uh, some strategy to improve the performance by utilizing the JIT optimization, right? And are you asking the patterns to improve the performance with this JIT? Or, okay, okay. So um, there could be, some uh, ideas to improve the performance on JIT, like using local variable instead of instance variable, since instance variable could be uh, allocated on heap and it's slower than uh, just using local variable since, uh, or stack, but um, I, want, I don't want to introduce that because <laughs> uh, it, that kind of thing would uh, annoy the users of Ruby, and so I want to, uh, I want not. I want you not to care about that uh, by uh, improving the performance. So all I want is just a benchmark for your use case, and I optimize that for you. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah. So yeah. That's uh, so. The question was: uh, Is there a, uh, just switch for? compile all or just nothing or 
do, you ha we, do we have a method to compile a specific method? But um, yeah, previously, in my previous experiment in code error RB, I implemented a method to specify a method to be jitted, but um, it's, it also, it would uh, complicate the usage. So I don't want users not to care about the JIT compiler, basically. So I intentionally avoided to introduce that, that method. So it's over nothing for now. And in the future, just it's all in, uh, by default and uh, optionally disabled by, uh, yeah, nothing. So the question was the ob how much the overhead of the JIT compilation. And uh, so the bottleneck of JIT compilation is for optimizing the optimization of the C compiler. So when we, when MJIT worker generates a, a native code, uh, nat uh, MJIT worker uh, transpiles the Ruby's bytecode to C code, but it's not so slow. So it's, it's some, some sub milliseconds and uh, uh, it's then it's uh, C compiler is spawned and uh, C compiler has a lot of optimizations and it's the most slow thing. So, and uh, so it takes about uh, five, five, 50 sec milliseconds in minimum and uh, about, it could take uh, 200 milliseconds in my machine, in my strong machine, but it could be <laughs> slower on some uh, weak machines and yeah. So some, some hundred seconds, milliseconds is the bottleneck for the JIT compiler. So I fortunately, fortunately, uh, previously, in previously, I introduced the support for virtual study, uh, virtual, sorry, sorry, virtual studio in the previous three. So it could work on the uh, Windows, even in Windows virtual studio, and uh, also it supports the clan, uh, LLVM clan. So it can uh, use the optimization of the clan. And uh, so the question was, uh, uh, is it uh, specific to, uh, only available for GCC? And uh, um, it's currently uh, Ruby supports the GCC and clan and Visual Studio. Visual Studio, I guess most of people are not using Visual Studio for Ruby. <laughs> but <laughs> there's a Ruby committer who loves Visual Studio a lot. So I supported that for him. <laughs> The question was, is it really slow by, become slow by this memory pressure or uh, locking and so things explaining or actually uh, co generated code could be slower or not? And their answer is um, that could be slow, uh, especially for uh, exception, except, uh, internal exceptions. So. If there's a, a Ruby block uh, and inside a break, break statement is there, uh, break uh, escapes the block to um, top Ruby method, so it uses the internal exception. But uh, on virtual machine, uh, exception can be uh, simulated very easily because all of the Ruby methods is uh, calculated in the same uh, virtual machine call. But in JIT compiler, uh, we can't escape easily from uh, the one block to outside uh, the Ruby method. So it could be slow, but in usually it's not the bottleneck for that. Yeah, so, so that, uh, the, uh, yeah, that's the, my intention of the last feature, and uh, I, want, I may be able to create some heuristics to avoid such uh, slowness, generated code. Oh, yeah. Um, so the question was, uh, am I using my many benchmarks other than Opticat, I guess? And uh, I'm, sometimes I use a discourse benchmark, which is a Rails application, and uh, which is uh, my main uh, motivation to improve that. And uh, yeah, I, I'm also running the Rails application in production, and so I want to improve Rails application performance. So I mainly use Opticat and discourse benchmark because um, discourse takes a lot of time to measure, so. I cannot use a lot of benchmarks, but uh, mainly if we, I, if I, when I do uh, optimization, I test uh, obscure and discourse benchmark mainly. I think it's time. Thank you. <laughs>